So uh, Sri Ram, I'm gonna welcome you now. Uh, and I'm gonna ask you actually for five quick definitions uh, before we launch into your presentation. Um, Cause I just wanna make sure that everybody is sort of on the same page uh, based on a lot of the questions that we got. We, we just wanna make sure that we kind of level set uh, folks who are here now for the first time, uh, people who've been here before, we wanna make sure everybody's in the same place. So first of all, I wanna welcome you. It's really nice to have a black belt uh, here with us. Um, you are the director of the Azure AI Global Black Belt team at Microsoft. What's Azure AI? That's one of the definitions we're about to give. Um, you primarily work um, with the most strategic Fortune 100 or even Fortune 50 companies to help them adopt Microsoft's AI services to solve key business challenges. And you've been doing this kind of work at the cutting edge of technology uh, for more than a quarter century. It's really great to have you here. Welcome. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Really happy to be here. Thanks to all of you at BizHack Academy for having me here. Really excited to talk to you about AI today. Wonderful. So let's start with five definitions. Um, artificial intelligence can mean a lot of things. What does artificial intelligence mean for us today, Sri Ram? Yeah, it's a great question. I think I think we've come a long way in terms of like. Um, what artificial intelligence means. Um, and back in the 1950s, when this was actually first introduced as, you know, more of a concept came coming out of various science labs, we've come a long way today on, you know, how we actually get to define and uh, do things with it. Uh, primarily, a lot of AI has been referred to by machine learning, which is one super small subclass of what AI is. Um, so there's this concept of artificial general intelligence, which is really getting the computers to behave like humans, right? So that is the goal is to see how we can have that functionality or capability. But having said that, we are in a narrower class of AI and we're getting slowly um, you know, to that artificial general intelligence. We are a long way from getting there. So all the things that you see in like Star Wars type movies are nowhere close to what's going to be, you know, uh, real. But having said that, there are lots of sub focus areas within AI that are super useful in a productive way for businesses. And so the fundamental definition that we have today in terms of what we talk about and how we think about AI is how can we power these machines with cognitive capabilities like a human can. So whether it's being able to recognize speech, whether it's able to recognize images, so vision, image processing, those sorts of cognitive capabilities that our brain has, how can we teach the computers to do the same thing? And there are sort of three factors that go into that and why it's becoming relevant today. One is we have to feed the computers lots and lots of data so it can learn. Uh, and that wasn't possible until like maybe like 10 years ago where we are collecting all of this information, right? From Instagram to Facebook to all of these social media data explosion that we have is also powering the capability of being able to build those sorts of capabilities. The second thing is compute. We didn't have you know, a lot of compute capabilities before, but now with the advent of the cloud, with companies like Microsoft, Google, Amazon, et cetera, where you can train and build these sorts of models that is also helping. And the third thing is the innovation in terms of algorithms that require the capability to build these human-like skills. So I know you only asked for a definition of AI, but AI is really about how do we get computers to have cognitive capabilities, but in a way where it's useful for us. Perfect. What about chat GPT and GPT? Yeah. So obviously the people that named it is not from a marketing department because uh, GPT stands for generative pre-trained transformer. Um, and so that is obviously a very technical term, but I think it's stuck uh, you know, in the, um, in the experimental phase and they just stuck to it from marketing standpoint as well. So GPT is a class of AI um, that is all about generating new content. So like you had mentioned, Dan, in your introduction, so generative AI, that's the class of AI that we are in, which is a subsection of machine learning, and even within that deep learning, which is this um, way of training these systems to think and act like our brain. So we have the neural networks in our brain and we build artificial neural networks so that they can process data just like our humans would. And 
in that particular domain of neural networks, what we are doing now is feeding it with lots and lots of data. So GPT models actually are trained with billions and billions of parameters so that it sort of like knows everything that is out there in the internet with the idea that when you do that, it can automatically recognize patterns. It can actually predict the next sentence and the next set of things that you ask it. And that's why a chat you an interface where you're asking questions um, becomes very powerful because it just seems to know everything. So chat GPT is an implementation of that GPT model, which is a transformer model that is a large language model that's running on many, many computers that's fed this humongous amount of data with the idea that with that scale, you get it to understand and answer any questions that you um, post it to. So that's why it's, uh, you know, chat GPT, uh, which is a one model within that GPT family. Love it. Now, chat GPT is made by a company called OpenAI. A lot of confusion about who OpenAI is. They got started as a nonprofit. Elon Musk was one of the founders uh, and one of the initial funders. He has since sold his stake to Microsoft. Um, so what is uh, OpenAI and what is its relationship with Microsoft? Yeah, so OpenAI is uh, an independent um, research organization um, and um, they are the ones that build these large language models, including ChatGPT, right? So they're a research organization that's uh, primarily focused on innovation and their mission is to use AI as a way to enable all of us. And as you know, Microsoft's mission is to, you know, make sure that we can do this for the larger masses to make sure that every person in this planet has access to these capabilities. And so what we did about three years or so ago is we partnered with OpenAI primarily to enable them to innovate and build these large language models. Because like I said, one of the critical things about AI is to have large computing capacity. So what Microsoft you know, was interested in is to see how we can enable a research startup like OpenAI to take advantage of the cloud infrastructure that we have in place so they can bring this innovation to the masses. So that was a primary focus of the partnership is to provide this AI supercomputer, if you will, that they can then build these models on top of. Um, and so, and this requires behind the scenes, several you know, compute clusters with GPUs running on them. So they had to design special hardware engineered computers to enable these models to run in an effective and scalable manner. So that was a primary focus of the partnership, right? Now, because OpenAI has been so successful in innovating and building these models like ChatGPT, we also now, as part of this partnership, have invested even more so that we can bring these models and do two more things with it. Number one, incorporate them within our own Microsoft first-party tools, like Excel example that you mentioned, right? You know, we have a lot of productivity tools like Office, like GitHub, like Power BI and so on and so forth. The idea is how can we then integrate all of these large language models into our own first party product so that if you are an end user of these tools, you get the power of um, this GPT capability. The, the other reason this partnership is also interesting for us is while it's great that you can go to Excel, Word, et cetera, and take advantage of these uh, tools, we wanna open all of these capabilities to you as a customer so that you can then incorporate them in your business applications. And that's you know, how we wanna offer these models as an API or as a consumable application that you can incorporate in your workflows. So that's the other reason why this partnership is important. So just to summarize, right, we primarily started with hardware infrastructure and focusing and making sure that they can innovate. And we continue to do that as they build new models Chat GPT is just one of them. They, they've built a lot of other models and they're continuing to do so. So we will continue working with them and providing the hardware capability from Azure. Number two, we'll bring these models into our own first party products. And number three, which is probably the most interesting for this audience is how do you then take these models and put them to use in your applications? Whether you're a small business or an enterprise, it doesn't matter. 
the cost of experimentation is ridiculously no, low with this, uh, you know, with this sort of capability that our mission is to democratize AI for the masses. Beautiful. Yeah, I mean, Microsoft is perhaps the greatest company in the history of the world in building business tools. And AI is the technology that undergirds this incredible opportunity. And then an API, guys, is just how you know one computer system communicates with another. And so in this context, when we talk about in integration or powered by ChatGPT, that might be powered through uh, an integration with GPT. Now, let's talk about um, two other terms of art. One is co-pilot and the other is Azure AI. Yeah, so let's talk about Copilot first. Um, I like your Clippy example. So um, Clippy on steroids you know, is what basically Copilot is. Um, so the reason why we wanted to call these models and using them in your applications or in our own tools Copilot is because they are an assistant. They are not, it is not an autopilot, right? So we wanna make sure that you don't take these and sort of like automate everything completely and have the AI do all of that work for you. We are not there yet. So what this means is that how can we make your task better as a co-pilot where we help you be more productive, but again, it's an assistant. It's a first draft that you then can review and as a human, take action on top of it. So that's why we use the term co-pilot. So for example, you know, one of the applications of ChatGPT that you may have seen is it can really uh, very nicely generate content for you. So let's say you're generating marketing content, you know, you, you're doing a, a marketing blitz and you want to generate invitations and emails and so on and so forth. You can give it a set of instructions, the prompts that you talked about in natural language, and it'll generate that content for you. But we do not want that to be like, just go click it and it goes out to your consumers. You use that as your first draft and you review it as a human and make sure that you make your changes and you know maybe like you know try different things and get the right final output and then you know you send it out so that's why it's a co-pilot and it's not an autopilot so that's that's the reason for that term azure ai which is a second uh, part of your question is i want to so i want to pause just real quick so throughout the sessions we've been looking for metaphors or ways for you to think frameworks for you to think about this brand new technology and I just want to point out that co-pilot versus autopilot is very similar to this idea of AI plus human versus AI without a uh, human without AI. It's very similar to this idea of a cyborg, right? Is very similar to this idea of you partnering with and using AI as a tool, but not as a replacement. This idea we've talked about going from a coder to a debugger, from an editor, from a writer to an editor. The, all of this is the same theme. And I love the term co-pilot because it really suggests to you a partnership. And the more you understand, respect, and honor the skills and limitations of your partner, the better a co-pilot they will be. So Azure AI. Yeah, absolutely. So Azure AI is, so Microsoft's cloud uh, system is called Azure, as you all probably know. And what we want to do is that while OpenAI builds these capabilities like ChatGPT, um, we want to then bring those same capabilities for you as a consumer to use. So what we are doing is that we are bringing all of these AI services and offering it as part of our Azure ecosystem so that you can then, instead of you spending time, not everybody can afford an army of data scientists to build your own models and do this in-house. We are now building these models or bringing models from partners like OpenAI and offering it on the cloud platform that we have called Azure so that you simply access these models um, you know, as if you uh, outsourced the data science work to Microsoft and you're still just integrating those uh, capabilities in your applications, right? So Azure AI is a collection of services that have a bunch of pre-built models, like OpenAI has an example, that you can access and use in your applications. Having said that, if there is a data science audience here, or if you have, if, if you have data scientists in your organization, 
the, the Azure AI also provides that computing capability for data scientists to build their own models. So fundamentally, I think of building AI application as one of two ways. Um, one is you build your own models, custom AI models, because you have the data science expertise, you have access to a lot of data, and then you want to build models using open source frameworks and other such technologies. Well, you can use Azure AI's compute platform to do that. The second way of building AI applications is you want to use the pre-built models that companies like Microsoft are offering, like OpenAI as an example, and you then just worry about integrating them in your workflows. Um, and both applications, you can do best, you can do both. It, it's not like you have to pick one versus the other, uh, but for a lot of customers, this concept of using pre-built models uh, gets them really faster in terms of uh, innovation. Um, so Azure AI, to answer your question, is just a collection of all of these services that when you go and uh, um, have a Azure account, uh, you will be able to access uh, from us as a managed service. Is it fair to say that Azure AI, Azure AI is sort of similar to Amazon Web Services? Yeah. Yeah. Which was kind of one of the first players in the space, and 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 I think more people probably are familiar with it. Um, I'll do respect than Azure AI. Yeah. So AWS uh, is Azure. Azure AI is a portion of Azure that has AI services, and AWS of course has you know their own uh, set of AI services as well. Um, they have tools like AWS Sage Maker, which is their machine learning platform. We have a tool called Azure Machine Learning, which is our machine learning platform. So yes, both AWS and Google for that matter, GCP, Google Cloud Platform and Azure are the cloud providers. And each of those cloud providers have AI services. And for Microsoft, all of those collection of AI services, we call them Azure AI. Perfect. All right, well, I think we have set a solid foundation of knowledge and now let's jump on in uh, to your presentation and Q&A to follow. Uh, I did want to say, guys, a couple things. One, there's a poll that many of you have answered, but about two th one third of you haven't. So please jump, jump in and answer the poll. And then second is five of you have asked questions and we'd like more uh, because this is your chance to speak to a senior person at Microsoft about how to use AI in your business. So, um, and Nicole, did you have a question? I did. There's a question and it hasn't been asked in the questions as much, um, but in the chat, there's been more questions about how can I use it in my business? Like, how does it apply in very simple terms to a small business and how, you yeah. know, how I can use these services? Yeah, I will definitely answer that a million different ways. The, the number one question, Sriram, that everybody is asking is how do I use this? Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to um, look at the deck that he presents to Fortune 50, Fortune 100 companies that kind of give that I, an answer to that at the Fortune 100 level. And then we're going to use the Q&A in our conversation to bring that down to the level of most of the folks uh, who are not in the Fortune 100 who are on this call. Uh, 